Hello and welcome once again to the Pinsent Masons podcast, where we try to keep you abreast of the most important developments in global business law every second Tuesday. This week we hear about how the first year of Europe's unified patent court has gone, and we find out why German court system reform could mean that companies face more mass actions against them than ever. But first, some business law news from around the world. Pharma companies will find patent extensions harder to get if EU court follows advice. India demands contractors use mediation rather than arbitration. And UK finance firms warned over advertising and promotions. Pharmaceutical companies will find it harder to obtain supplementary protection certificates or SPCs for so-called combination medicines in the future if the EU's highest court, the Court of Justice of the European Union, follows a recent opinion issued by one of its advisers. Advocate General Nicholas Emilio proposed that applicants for SPCs should have to satisfy a two-step test in relation to one of the four criteria relevant to whether combination medicines are eligible to be granted SPCs. Opinions of Advocates General are not binding on the CJEU, but they are often followed. A combination medicine is created by the joining together of two other medicines. The CJEU has been asked by courts in Ireland and Finland to clarify the criteria that must be met if combination medicines are going to be eligible for SPCs, which extend patent protection. Karen Gallagher of Pinsent Masons said that a ruling in line with the opinion would be welcomed by patent holders, but only if they can overcome that two-step test set out by Emilio. Contractors and suppliers to Indian public bodies will have to rethink their dispute resolution approach as the government of India has issued guidelines encouraging the use of mediation over arbitration for disputes arising out of public sector contracts. This means that arbitration should not be used as the norm in procurement contracts, especially in large value contracts. The use of arbitration will be limited to disputes with a value of less than 100 million rupees. The inclusion of arbitration clauses where disputes with a value exceeding that threshold are expected will need to be justified on a case-by-case basis and will require approval from the government. The Indian government's guidelines claim that the arbitration process takes longer than expected and is expensive and that a large majority of arbitration decisions are being challenged in the courts both by the government and by the opposite party. As a result, instead of reducing litigation, it has become virtually an additional layer and source of more litigation, delaying final resolution, it said. Shahrazad Dubash of Pinsent Mason said that for international companies doing business in India, it's crucial to have a well-defined dispute resolution strategy from the outset, and international businesses will now need to pay close attention to the dispute resolution clause if the public sector plays any part in the project. Experts have said that UK financial investment and trading firms must maintain robust systems and controls in relation to social media communications, advertising and publicity arrangements, such as endorsements by influencers or celebrities. The warning comes after nine social media influencers were charged by the UK's Financial Conduct Authority with issuing unauthorised financial promotions and running an unauthorised investment scheme. The FCA alleges that the people used an Instagram account to provide advice on the buying and selling of investments called Contracts for Difference. It alleges that the influences were paid by account owners to promote the Instagram account. Sebastien Ferrier of Pinsent Mason said, Firms should note that the FCA is regularly monitoring social media platforms for unauthorised financial promotions and is increasingly likely to have misleading or unauthorised promotions removed before beginning prosecutions of firms or people. In the last year, the FCA has secured charges, convictions or sentencing in at least 13 criminal cases. The majority of the cases concerned fraud in relation to areas such as unauthorised investments and contracts for difference. A year ago, the way that companies could challenge and defend their patents in Europe changed completely. The Unified Patent Court, 20 years of wrangling in the making, came into existence, allowing companies to go through a single process to gain protection for inventions across Europe. Previously, companies would have to apply for patents in any individual country, meaning Europe-wide protection was not only time-intensive and expensive, but inconsistent, so that you could have a patent granted in one country, but rejected in another. 
So what happened in the first year of this major new patent system? Amsterdam-based intellectual property expert Judith Crenz told me that it had been largely a success. Actually, a lot has happened uh, during the first year. Lots of parties were waiting to start their litigation exactly on that uh, first date, which, which they did. And then a lot of parties followed, but also a lot of administrative issues arise. And meanwhile, of course, the proceedings all uh, went on. Um, a lot of um, PI, so preliminary injunction uh, proceedings, where there is a fast uh, track uh, that the court hears, uh, hears, the, hears the case. Um, and also a lot of procedural requests and, and actions in order to um, to clarify what the rules of procedure actually uh, mean. So that is what we have seen over this uh, first year. Countries have to opt into the system and currently 17 are part of it, with Romania becoming an 18th in September. There's an initial court, a court of appeal and the right to refer matters of EU law to the Court of Justice of the European Union. Judith said that observers have been surprised at some of the kinds of companies using the new system. What we see many different um, different industries, consumer goods, that's what we see a lot that wasn't really uh, predicted. We do see, see a lot of electronics. Uh, before the opening of the Unified Patent Court, one said, well, we don't think that the life sciences industry will be among the first adapters of the court. Um, But actually, we have seen um, a couple of cases uh, where life sciences companies are involved, uh, mainly um, in the what we call the uh, med tech uh, sector. And that was um, it was unexpected that life sciences uh, companies would be um, would be filing their cases in the first year. It was not expected um, because. For life sciences companies, um, compared to, for example, electronics companies, um, there, there, there is a lot at stake and their patent portfolios are just smaller than those of the electronics companies. So for electronics companies, they, they, they can enforce really a lot of their, their patents. So if they lose one patent... Um, but they can just enforce another one. For life sciences companies, uh, there are a couple of very crucial patents, um, which if they lose, that that means, you know, a a, a big setback for for uh, the company as such. So um, one thought they would be on the conservative side of things. Um, what we have seen uh, last year, um, the the most surprising thing I think is that. A couple of life science companies which were litigating already um, against each other in the US, in, in Europe, um, several places now opted for the Unified Patent Court as just an additional uh, jurisdiction. Though companies in 17 countries can bring cases to the UPC, the activity has not been geographically evenly divided, said Judith, which might alter the tenor of early rulings. Most of the cases, or really a large amount of the cases, have been filed in uh, one of the uh, German local divisions. So the majority of the cases are handled by German judges, um, which is not a bad thing as such, but as the unified patent system is meant to be a European system with the good things from each and every jurisdiction in um, the European uh, Union. As the majority of the cases is, is in Germany, that there there's much more German influence than one had thought um, uh, before or that one had hoped for. So that is not because the German judges um, are not good, the German patent system is, is excellent, but a better balance um, would be good. The real impact of the UPC system will probably not be fully felt until rulings are made on legally substantial issues rather than just procedural ones. Judith says that the year ahead will be crucial. There have been... Um, quite a number of decisions on preliminary requests, either injunctions or with respect to 
a seizure of evidence or other professional um, measures. Um, the first cases on what we call the merits um, have been heard and, and the first couple are, are coming out now. But because those cases usually take about a year and that's also the ambition of the UPC to do it within about a year, which is faster than in many other jurisdictions, I think we will see a lot actually during this uh, the second year we're in now. What we will see is that we will get quite some decisions on the, on the merits. So then we will learn how the UPC judges will interpret it, the um, material um, law and the questions they have to deal with. And we will also see whether um, the type of companies which are using um, the UPC now will continue to use that. And also, uh, on the other side, whether um, companies which haven't used it yet um, will be ready to start using it or whether it's not um, a time yet. So I do think it will be a very interesting year. Germany is poised to pass a law that would digitise some elements of its court service in a bid to increase access to justice. The proposals would affect some regional courts and would allow citizens to directly file a lawsuit digitally for the first time. Those regional courts decide cases worth relatively modest sums, thousands of euros at a time. So you would think this wouldn't have a major impact on big business. But the changes could have a significant impact on mass actions where lots of people with small claims band together to sue a company for what can end up being a very big claim. Munich-based disputes expert Alessandro Capone first explained to me what the changes are. So this new law is basically... Um introducing so-called real-world laboratories, um, which means that um, there's now the, now the chance that um, the German state can pick certain courts and try new uh, either technology or new systems um, in handling court cases. Um, and it is doing so in this new um, draft law. It's not yet um, a real law and um, still have, has to be passed. Um, it is doing so in implementing online platforms where citizens can um, file lawsuits uh, digi completely uh, digitally, um, which is a new way um, of filing actions, at least in Germany. This is mainly what this new law is about. Um, and maybe the second interesting aspect is that um, the court um, opens the whole court system for these real world laboratories. Um, so we can uh, test new systems, new ideas, new technology um, in a much more easy way in Germany than it is the case right now. The law is just a draft, but Alessandro says that all the main political parties support the modernisation of court processes, so the proposal is very likely to become law. Changes would affect many of the court's processes. The, the platform this new draft law is proposing um, has this possibility of filing the lawsuit online, but also uh, has um, other functionalities for the parties involved. For example, um, the parties could exchange directly over this platform um, messages or, um, uh, or just conduct uh, communication and the whole intake of the, of the case would be different. Um, you would have uh, a uniform nationwide uh, technical standard to take in the whole facts of the case and to structure the whole um, legal issue, what the case is about. With this new uh, platform, you would have a set structure for a legal issue and everybody has to follow this, struct this structure, which means that the whole problem is structured in a different way. Um, finally, the, the new platform would allow to have the outcome of a case being published online via this platform. Right now, we have really little amounts of cases being published in general in Germany and also not 
uh, online. The, the goal is to make the whole court system more accessible for all citizens. Giving citizens that easier, more direct access to courts could have outsized impact in the area of mass actions because it makes it more efficient and cheaper for people to make claims, including in a coordinated way. When it comes to mass actions, the value in dispute doesn't have to be that high for people to go after their case. So it can be also around 1,000 euro or 5,000 euro. It's not really important. It's more um, whether the legal industry can make an offer uh, to the to the claimants uh, to go after their right. So if you have um, a potential claim of, let's say, 1,000 euro, but it costs you 950 euro for because you have to hire an attorney or to pay a legal tech or whatever, you're most likely not going to follow through on this because it's too much hassle. But if there's a solution by, a, by the claimant industry that you can um, go after your claim for off 1,000 euro for, let's say, 50 euro, more people are likely to do so. If this online platform has the technical possibilities that you can populate, for example, the whole um, site through which the intake of a case is performed, then you could do it automatically. And if you can do it automatically and for a huge number of people, it's easy, It's even easier for the claimant side to bring their case. They have an easier way to file claims and therefore um, it's likely that even more claims or potential claims from, uh, fr from citizens are being filed. So if we're going to see more claims, which kinds of companies will that affect? I think you can break it down All companies which deal with a lot of uh, individuals, so all companies which are uh, uh, custom, which have a high number of customers, um, all companies which have potential claims against them, which are higher probably than a couple of hundred euros. I mean, it's not likely that people will. Um, bring their claims if it's about, let's say, 10 euro because it's too, too expensive for the legal industry to, to, to have like an offer for these claimants to make it sensible to follow through on this claim. You have to be aware that all, all the technical implications and all the road blockers um, for an easy workflow on either the defendant or the um, claimant side when it comes to mass action are also holding back certain type of cases. So if you have like the perfect technical setup and everything is being done by just a few clicks, you naturally make it easier to bring claims and therefore you lower the bar for any new potential claims. So when it comes to mass actions, uh, I expect that the number will increase the more the accessibility of the court system increases. Well, thank you very much for listening. We appreciate you spending time with us. We know you have lots of options out there. If you think this podcast would be useful to colleagues, contacts or friends, please do share it. If you're a first time listener, welcome. Do subscribe. And remember, you can get up to the minute business law news and analysis from our team of journalists at PincentMasons.com. And to make sure you get personalised news as it happens, sign up for updates at PincentMasons.com slash newsletter. Thanks for joining us again and see you next time. The Vincent Mason's podcast was produced and presented by Matthew McGee for international professional services firm, Vincent Mason's.